everyone, so today I want to talk about the BBC series Imagine and the episode I'm talking about is Ian Rankin and the case of the disappearing detective. Obviously I was watching this because I am a huge fan of Ian Rankin, I love the Inspector Rebus series and I want to say right now I've only read up to book 14 of the Rebus series, I did worry that this was going to give away spoilers for the series, absolutely doesn't, um, I haven't learned anything about it that I didn't already know. One thing could be looked at as a spoiler, but really it's common knowledge, um, so it's, it's not really a spoiler, but just be careful. But it's fine. And what this does, the premise of this program, is that it follows Ian Rankin around as he's writing his latest novel, which at the time was the new Rebus novel. Now when he announced the, the release of the Rebus novel, and we get to see footage of him announcing um, this new Re Rebus novel, I was over the moon. I could not wait. And I, it's, it's out. Today is the 7th, it's out on the 8th, this video will be up on the 9th. So by the time you're watching this video, the new Inspector Rebus novel will be released. So that's really, really quite exciting. And it follows him around as he's writing it, in the early stages of his writing of it, and right through to the edi editing stages. Which is automatically going to be very insightful. I don't know how many of you are writers, um, or writers of fiction, but it really gives a proper insight into his personal thought process and his the steps he takes the leading up to the writing and um, he has a very interesting little green folder in which he keeps various clippings and scribblings on paper and things which I thought was really fascinating and something I've been meaning to do for quite a while but I never got around to doing it. I really should. So we get to see how he prepares for the novel and then the writing stages of the novel and you know how much he writes and how quickly he writes and what I love most about this is that he doesn't ever pretend to be this expert writer who can write a 360 page novel in a week and know exactly what he's doing. He does express the fact that, you know, he will hit points in the novel where he's he's unsure of what's coming next and he's not confident with the, the way the characters are going and things like that. So it's really, really comforting and really supportive to know that me as an amateur writer, it, I'm not necessarily in a position that, you know, the experienced writers don't find themselves in. So it's quite nice to know that and you're watching it with a lot of reassurance as far as writing goes, I picked up quite a few tips and, and techniques and things to look out for. So that, that was really nice. So in terms of actually what the program is about, it's absolutely brilliant. It's told in various different ways, following him around in the writing process. Sometimes we have a proper camera going around with him. Sometimes he does his own little video diary, which is really nice and really makes it a lot more personal. What I find with that is that it is very... Ian Rankin. You can see that it's about him. It's not just about a general writer. Uh, I learned quite a little bit more about his love of music because I knew he had this love of vinyls but I didn't really know why. He kind of talks about that a little bit which I thought was fascinating. And one thing I just want to mention, he, when he writes he listens to music which without spoiling things, in the documentary he says that you know when he listens to these certain tracks that he's listened to for years it tells his brain that he's now in writing mode. Now people have said to me, don't listen to music when you write. I have to because I can't, if I have silence, I'm constantly listening out for noises that are going to interrupt my writing. So I always have to have on, um, right now I use Madame de Pompadour from the Series 2 Doctor, season, series two Doctor Who soundtrack CD. That's my writing music. So uh, it's, it's nice to know that I'm not defying the laws of writing by listening to music, you know, uh, so that was lovely as well. But we do get to see that he's a genuine person. Sometimes you can get with similar documentaries, not always just with writers, but they're really false and they've really risen above themselves and they're, you know, they're getting too big for their boots just because they've got a bit of money. With Ian Rankin, that is most certainly not the case. And I think that's one of the things I first liked about him when I started reading him because I, you know, I watched interviews and things. And I just thought he's so genuine and I love him. And he's Scottish as well. Uh, he's from Edinburgh. I'm from Aberdeen, so I'm slightly, slightly more northern than him, but uh, that's always a lovely thing. So the fact that he comes across as genuine, sincere, and, you know, truthful, I think, which to say he's truthful when he writes lies for a living is quite weird, but, you know, absolute lovely portrayal of him. It doesn't put him in a bad light in the slightest. So yeah, we have the <laughs> video diary, as I was saying. We have the video diaries and the actual interviews with him. We get to look around Edinburgh. Of course, Edinburgh is at the heart of his writing, and most certainly, at the heart of the Rebus stories. Um, I would love to go on the Rebus tour in Edinburgh. I will one day. I will get to do it one day um, when I find the time. Uh, yeah, so we get the, the uh, look at Edinburgh and um, we get to see a lot of his journey. He, what I like about him is that he travels and he goes that extra mile with his research for his novels, which I think is the, the key to being a good novelist, which is something I really need to practice. Um, 
you know, you can be as talented as you can want with the actual formation of words, but if you don't put the effort into the research, your story's going to lack in realism. Uh, of course, unless you're not writing a realism novel, but then there you go. We get to see clips from the Rebus TV series, which, to be honest, I found a little bit uncomfortable. I'm very confident in my, my own views and my own depictions of Rebus as a character, and I don't like um, Ken Stott or whatever kind of imposing on that. So I, I've made the point of not watching the series, so I wasn't really keen on the clips. But, you know, um, it's nice to have them in there just to highlight just how successful this Rebus series is. Rebus is one of the most popular crime fiction characters and probably one of the most popular characters of all time to be honest. He is amazing and the amount of copies Ian Rankin has sold is, is absolutely phenomenal. We are given some facts and figures in this but not so much that you're kind of like, maths, go away, you know. So that's lovely. There are inputs from various different celebrities, the Harry Biker, Stephen Fry, which just gives a little bit of a twist and to be honest, I, when you have celebrities in programs like this, it's kind of like they're almost trying to sell it to a different audience. But I don't think that's necessary. You know, I'm pretty, think, I'm pretty sure Ian Rankin is perfectly capable of selling his own copies to anybody in the world. But it's nice to have that little input as well. So to see the development in the process at which Ian Rankin went to write Standing in Another Man's Grave is really fascinating. When I read it now, which will be in about five Rebus books time, so I do have, as I said, um, some more to get through. I will be able to read it with a lot more insight into the story and when I'm reading it I'll be able to think I know where he went to find out that bit of information and it's really lovely to get that, that insight plus even if you're even if you're not interested in, in Ian Rankin, if you've never read Ian Rankin first of all go to the library get a copy of um, ooh, Knots and Crosses. Is Knots and Crosses the first one or Hide, hide and Seek? I think Knots and Crosses is the first one and then Hide and Seek is the second, don't quote me. Go to the library, get a copy of a Rebus book, read it, watch this, and you've just started a love affair with a brand new book series. It is phenomenal and I can't get enough of it. This program is very beneficial to writers. I, as I said, I picked up quite a lot of information from it. But as a fan of Rebus, I absolutely loved it and pretty much drooled over the TV the whole way through it. But it is gorgeous. Um, very well edited, very well formatted. and Lots of variety going on in there. An hour in length completely hooked to the laptop screen. Please feel free to leave comments and let me know your thoughts. Also, if you watched this having not read any Rebus books before, I'd love to know what you thought of that and kind of, did you think, could you keep up with it? Did you really enjoy it as much as a Rebus fan did? You know, let me know. I'm keen to see your, your views from that point and I will see you all next time. Bye.